Althea Spinazzi, Fixed Income Strategy, Saxo Bank. Good morning, Althea. Thank you so much for joining us today. Good morning, Alexandra. Thank you for having me. So, uh, of course, let's kick off with the Fed. By the way, I just wanted to remind everyone that the ECB uh, kind of surprised markets last week with a little bit of more hawkish tone than expected. So what are your expectations from the Fed? And do you think that 25 basis points is the most likely scenario? Of course, I'm talking about 25 basis points rate increase. Absolutely. Uh, well, we believe that uh, there is uh, either two scenarios uh, upcoming uh, from the Federal Reserve meeting, either a 25 uh, basis point rate hike uh, scenario, which is going to be combined with a hawkish message uh, related to the dot plot, uh, which is going uh, to show and match market expectations of interest rate hikes uh, for uh, this year. And otherwise, uh, a 50 basis point rate hike is not to exclude because as you just started off uh, uh, this conversation everything is about inflation and also the ECB last week uh, said that uh, fiscal that monetary policies at this point uh, have to focus on fighting inflation while if there is any concern about uh, growth uh, well that lack needs to be picked up uh, by uh, fiscal policies so at this point uh, um, the hope of the market and also the sell-off that we have seen yesterday uh, in US Treasuries points to the fact that the Federal Reserve needs to deliver, needs to be more aggressive and it's better to do that soon because inflation continues to soar. That's for sure and I was wondering by the way what is the bond market suggesting right ahead of FOMC meeting we did see yesterday the 10-year treasury hitting 2.1% uh, uh, which is pretty important key level on a technical basis today at 2.08 as of 15.04 Central European time so I was wondering uh, what is the bond market actually suggesting? Well, what the bond market is uh, suggesting is that uh, inflation uh, might uh, become uh, more of a permanent problem because you see, uh, Alexandra, the rise in nominal yields uh, has been provoked uh, by a rise uh, of inflation inf expectations. Uh, yesterday, we have seen uh, the 10 years break even approaching 3%, uh, uh, the, the 10 years zero coupon uh, inflation swap uh, breaking above uh, 3%. Uh, and this is definitely pricing that is happening at the very long term of the yield curve. So basically what's happening at this point is that the bond market says that if the Federal Reserve is not forceful enough, inflation here is to stay for the long run. And that target, inflation target of 2% is going almost to be impossible to achieve. So at this point, Alexandra is a little bit sad to put it uh, this way, uh, but also because we have a war in Ukraine and uh, we have uh, also lockdown in China, it might really mean that the Federal Reserve needs to provoke a recession in order to get hold of inflation. In fact, I was wondering how concrete are the possibilities of stagflation and, and even recession? They are. Uh, well, uh, right now it's uh, a little bit impossible to say. Uh, I think that uh, we will know more about that and we will be able to understand whether uh, we are approaching a recession uh, by mid of this year, so right uh, during summer, around June. Uh, right now is a little bit early because uh, we still see that both in the US and also in Europe, uh, the economy continue to expand. So this gives room to the Federal Reserve to be more aggressive and that's why we believe that tomorrow it has the chance to be more aggressive rather than less. And if it doesn't do that now, well, down to the road is going to be more difficult because it has to hike in a recessionary environment. And of course, uh, I was wondering, uh, you know, an, another extremely important topic is what is going on, of course, with Ukraine and, and the sanctions, which are negative for Russia, of course, but they are also negative for European economy and for US economy, specifically after the ban of uh, crude oil and, and gas imports in the US, which means, of course, inflationary pressures in terms of commodity prices, which are not into the hands of, of the Fed. Uh, so from this standpoint, stand I was wondering, do you think that the Fed has to consider and adjust monetary policy in terms of what is going on in Ukraine, which is most of a new European issue, of course? 
absolutely but the thing the point is that uh, the war in ukraine doesn't bring only commodity um, a surge of commodity prices uh, you mentioned for example oil and natural gas but what it provokes uh, is also like uh, um, um, more disruption in the supply chain uh, space so it means that the prices are not gonna um, rise only in the commodity space but also in the corporate space and we see some of these uh, already leaking because uh, yesterday uh, we had uh, the new york fed uh, um, uh, survey showing uh, that basically inflation is now leaking in uh, in the sector in the services sector which normally this this soaring price uh, tends to be more permanent that's why the federal reserve has to be forceful and of course uh, the war in ukraine uh, is is uh, definitely um, kind of worsening the situation that's for sure certainly we're going to follow the developments thank you very much Ote Spinozzi fixed income strategy Saxo bank thank you for joining us have a great day ahead thank you alexandra for having me